and always starting at the bottom and working to the top. Now there's an exception to the rule. If you're working with a client that has MS or has had a spinal injury and nerve flow isn't functioning, then you work from the skull down to move that energy down the spine. Otherwise, always work from the bottom of the spine up. And on this side, you're going to push down and then push away again. The object is to bring the muscle away from the spine itself so the muscle can relax, let go of the vertebra, so if it needs to move, it can move freely on its own. And if you find a muscle that's a little rigid or spastic, then you can just give that a little more attention there and come back and continue your flow upwards. Always coming back to the bottom and working up. And always repeat each step three times. Now as you go into the neck area, you're not going to put as much pressure as you would through the back. Always be conscious of any injury. If there's been a scar or a past injury, go gentle and light. Pay attention to your client, you know, listen to them, let them direct you. If it's sensitive or sore or tender, the objective is not to inflict pain. Step six, we go to Cyprus. Cyprus is a non-irritant to the skin. And dripping six to ten drops, if you get a few more, depending on the length of spine, it's quite okay. Using, again, the feather stroke to bring it along the spine, to spread it out. This also stimulates those nerve endings, triggers the receptors to take that oil molecule in and get it into the tissues and the bloodstream. And as we're working the entire spine here, you, as we talked about, this is the freeway of the nerves for the body. You cannot put any pressure to that spine, so be careful and be cautious of that. Now we're ready to do what I call the seesaw technique. Taking your two fingers, and in this case I'm using my right hand because I'm left-handed, and my left hand is I'm going to work as the saw. Now I'm going to place this knuckle right here at the base of my little finger between my two fingers on my right hand, like this, between the first and second knuckle. And that locks it in there. Then we're going to put it down. My right hand is going to push a firm pressure down, and I'm going to be pulling towards the head this way, up the spine, while my left hand is going to be working this way like a saw. And so what we're going to have is an effect going this way and the hand going this way at the same time. And it looks like this. Keeping a nice firm pressure all the way at the same time that you're working your hand as a saw action back and forth. You want to be sure that the pressure on your sawing hand is equal to the pressure in your hand that's pulling the fingers up the spine. One more time. And this is the action that you want to see. Remember keeping the pressure in your left hand and your right hand equal. Now we're ready for step seven, which is utilizing wintergreen. Birch has been utilized also. At current time, there's no production of birch in the world. So any birch that might be on the market would be synthetic birch. Again, 
dripping six to 10 drops along the spine will be quite adequate. Always feather stroking the oil along. Now, wintergreen, like birch, contains methyl salicylate, which is about 98%. Methyl salicylate can be a little irritating to sensitive skin. One of the things to keep in mind and remember, blondes and redheads have much more sensitive skin. And after you've completed the three uh, strokes, then you come back with the thumb roll or thumb walk up the spine, and this is using Vitaflex. And starting right at the base of the spine, offset your thumbs about a half inch so you don't bang your knuckles together. So when you roll over, as I said before, to the fingernail, or in this case the thumbnail, you're not banging your knuckles together. And then just walk right up the spine. So make sure you come all the way back to the pads and then all the way over. Now this is good for dexterity of the fingers and thumbs as well. It's important to remember that you keep your nails cut and filed. If you leave tracks up the spine, nail tracks, then that tells you your nails are too long. You can be gentle the first time up to see how sensitive the person might be. A little more pressure the second and third time up. Now we're ready to go to step eight, which is using marjoram and peppermint. And with marjoram and peppermint as well, six to ten drops, but you can also be a little more liberal with the marjoram. And I do, I like putting it up pretty much all over the back because it's a nice relaxer. And we're going to do a little different feather stroking, starting with six inch strokes, just back and forth across the back as we work up. So we're spreading that oil all over the back. And again, repeat that three times. Remember, just lightly touching your fingertips. That's why it's called feather stroking. And when you have the oil spread out nice and evenly all over the back, then take your fingertips up about eight inches and feather off. Up and feather off. Up and feather off. All the way up the shoulders. And repeat that two more times. And now coming back and taking it all the way up and off the shoulders. And three times. And now we're ready to go to peppermint. And with peppermint, six to ten drops. Stroking along the spine. Peppermint just enhances all the other oils that have previously gone on. Peppermint enhances all the oils that have previously been applied. Same feather stroking technique. About eight inches and feather off. Carrying it all the way off the back. All the way to the edge. And up. You know, if you forget and you do four times, that's okay. And now coming back and taking it all the way up and off the shoulders. 